Do you suffer from irrational thoughts in your romantic relationship? These thoughts can make you feel crazy and they can drive you to behaviors that are jealous, anxious, obsessive, behaviors that can actually drive your partner away from you, behaviors that can even destroy a marriage. But the truth is you're not crazy. And there are a few ways you can actually differentiate between your rational fears or concerns in your relationship and your irrational, anxious, obsessive thoughts. That's what I'm gonna to talk to you about today. I wanna to talk about where these irrational thoughts come from, why you have them, and how to tell whether what you're thinking is a rational fear or an irrational fear. So I'm Rachel Sloan. I help anxious people save their marriages by stopping overcoming intrusive thoughts in just 30 days. So if you are ready to really silence that little voice in your head, those irrational intrusive thoughts, if you wanna get rid of them for good, go ahead and click the link below in the comments and schedule your free strategy call with me today. And let's see if I can help you get over those irrational intrusive thoughts for good. So what are these irrational thoughts? Why do you have them in the first place? Like, Where do they come from? There's a couple of things you need to know about these irrational thoughts. One is that brains love patterns, right? They like to follow a pattern. They like to have something predictable. So any past relationship sets you up to think a certain way about your future relationships. Any thoughts you had, any experiences you had in a past relationship creates a little neural pathway in your brain, the way you thought about that relationship. And so when you step into a new relationship, you already have a neural circuit that's all hooked up and ready to go about how you think about relationships. So your brain's like, great, new relationship, just gonna use this old pattern of neurons firing. It's easy, we can just follow it, we know what to do. Even if those thought patterns aren't really relevant to this new relationship, like if you were cheated on in the past and you form some beliefs about how men cheat or how women cheat and aren't faithful, those thought patterns are there. You've learned to think about your relationships that way and your brain is kind of lazy. It wants to take a path it's already taken before instead of creating a new one. It's easier, it goes down that route. So what you end up with are like these set of relationship defaults. It's like these default settings in your brain that dictates how you think automatically about relationships. And if you don't do anything, if you don't intervene, these are the thoughts that come up for you in any relationship you're in. So this isn't only true of romantic relationships. This happens with any past relationship, your past friendships, early childhood relationships with your parents, siblings, any different kind of human connection helps to program your relationship defaults that your brain uses to navigate a new relationship. These defaults can also be set by social conditioning, by what you read in books, by what you see in the movies, on social media, what people post on their Instagram about relationships or about men or about women. All of these things kind of pre-program your brain to fire certain neural pathways in response to a relationship situation. This is even true, well, you can actually just see it in the language that we use when we talk about relationships and partners. We say things like, is he meeting your needs? Do you get what you need from your partner? Does she make you feel loved? Right? We use this language that implies that our partner is supposed to create our feelings for us. So they're supposed to make us feel loved, appreciated, cared for, and okay. It's so ubiquitous, the way we talk about relationships, these defaults that aren't actually helpful when it comes down to the nitty gritty of being in a relationship. So that's where these irrational thoughts come from. They come from your past experiences, they come from what you see all around you. They're essentially just well-worn well neural tracks in your brain that your brain goes down every time it's like, oh, relationship mode, okay, here are all my thoughts and beliefs about relationships. Rational or irrational, it lines them all up, doesn't distinguish between them. And until you learn how to manage your mind and think on purpose and feel the way you want intentionally, until you learn that, your brain is essentially like open source code. Anybody can come and put things in there. So these defaults are always evolving and changing, but unless you are consciously managing the way you think and feel and thinking on purpose and with intention, 
then anyone can go in there and modify these. Any relationship you have, anyone who talks to you, advice from a friend, from Reddit, wherever you're getting your relationship information, your brain is like open source code. These neural pathways are just open to anybody to go in and edit them and tinker with them. And what happens is that you end up with a bunch of default thought patterns that you didn't choose, that are not helpful to you, and that pop up into your brain when you least expect it and when you definitely don't need them. You end up with a lot of unhealthy, irrational thought patterns, but it's not really your fault they're there because you didn't know that you could be managing your brain, that you could be thinking intentionally. And you didn't have to just let anybody go in there and program your relationship beliefs for you. So if you want to start thinking intentionally, if you want to start choosing your thoughts and feelings on purpose, the first thing you need to do is distinguish between what is a rational and irrational thought. So how do you tell? There are three tools I'm going to give you in this video to help you understand whether or not a thought is rational or irrational, how you can evaluate it. There are three ways you can do it. So the first is to check your own insecurities because most relationship anxieties stem from something you are insecure about. So if you are having thoughts that you're not good enough for your partner, that your partner's gonna leave you, that they're gonna fall in love with somebody else, that they're already cheating on you, that they're not the one, that they're not the perfect match for you. If you're having any of these really common relationship anxieties and fears, before you freak out, before you start attacking your partner and demanding to know where they've been and what they've been doing, take a moment and check your own insecurities. Get curious. Is it true, right? Is it about your partner and their behavior? Or is it about you? Is it about something you're afraid might be true about yourself? Is it something about your body image that you don't love the way you look, so you don't believe your partner could? Is it about your worth as a person? You don't believe you're worthy of love. Perhaps you don't even love yourself, so you don't trust that your partner loves you. You see where I'm going with the insecurities? This is hard, you guys. It's really hard to look at and understand and admit that you have these insecurities about yourself. This is a step where it can be really, really helpful to have a sounding board. That is what a coach or a therapist is really good for as you start to explore your insecurities, creating a safe space and helping you gently look for these insecurities and understand them so that you can look now at the context of what's happening in your relationship from a really rational place, knowing what's coming from your own insecurities versus what is coming from something that's actually going on in the relationship. So, if you're trying to do this on your own without help from a coach or therapist, I would strongly encourage you to try this little exercise. Set an intention before you explore your insecurities. Set an intention to set aside your shame or guilt or self-judgment. Say I, you can literally say this out loud to yourself, like I am going to explore my insecurities and I am going to set aside any shame or guilt or judgment I have about those insecurities. Your goal is to be in a really curious frame of mind. How can you get so curious about what's going on in your brain? And you can do things to help you get there. You can make that verbal commitment to yourself. You're gonna set aside shame and guilt and open-mindedly explore your insecurities. That often helps a lot because when you make that verbal commitment, your brain is listening and it helps it to open up and go with you instead of bringing up all those shameful thoughts. You can also give yourself a little boost by starting from a calm, happy, peaceful place. Do what it takes to get there. Go for a run, do some yoga, meditate, whatever helps you get into a calm, happy, relaxed state. Do that before you start digging into your own emotional insecurities. Give yourself the best chance of success if you're tackling that part on your own. The second thing you can do is look at the fear itself. The fear that you're not good enough for your partner. The fear that this isn't your soulmate. The fear that they're cheating on you or falling in love with somebody else or that you aren't hot enough for them, that you're too fat, that you're not blonde enough, whatever it is that you don't like about yourself that you're afraid they're gonna leave you for. Look at the fear itself and try to Ask yourself, is this a new fear or an old fear? Is it something that's only existed in this relationship? Or did I have the same fear with the last person I dated? Did I have the same fear 
with my ex-husband or with my childhood friend? Did I have the same fear in other relationships, romantic or not, in my life? Have I had similar fears in other parts of my life? Because if you notice that this fear, this concern is old, like say, I think my husband's going to leave me because he's going to fall in love with someone who's more beautiful than me, right? That's what I'm, say that's my fear. If that's my fear, I might start looking at that and be like, gosh, have I always been afraid that other people are more attractive than me, that I'm not pretty enough, that I'm not beautiful enough? And I might look back and be like, gosh, yeah, in middle school, I was just so mortified when those girls said those mean things to me. And yeah, that guy I dated before I got married, you know, he even told me that I wasn't the prettiest girl. And so I definitely was afraid, you know, he actually did leave me for this other hot person. But you might have had all these fears, justified or not, throughout your whole life. You might find, wow, I've really never thought I was pretty enough. Or my mom told me that I needed to you know, do my makeup better or lose weight or exercise more, right? Maybe you've had this theme throughout your whole life that you're not pretty enough. That would be an old fear. Or you might find that you, this fear is new, that it didn't exist until you were in this relationship. Maybe you'd never ever thought about somebody cheating on you and now this, this person, this woman say, maybe you are afraid of that. Old fear, new fear is not black and white. It's not like if it's a new fear, then it's definitely true and you should totally act on it. Old fear, it's a strong sign that this is probably an irrational thought pattern that you've practiced for a long time and that you shouldn't act on because it's probably not a real fear, a real grounded in reality in this relationship fear. If it's a new fear, it might be grounded in reality. Maybe your partner is cheating on you. Maybe that's why he's not coming home from work. Maybe that's why he's always talking to his ex-girlfriends. Right? If it's a new fear, that's a sign that like this came up now for some reason. It does not mean absolutely that you are right, that this is a completely rational thought and that you are thinking totally clearly. There could be other things going on, so make sure you check your insecurities and that you approach this from a neutral place. But checking whether this is a new or old fear is a good way to get a rough idea if this thought pattern is rational or irrational. Is it based in reality and what's really going on in front of you, or is it based in this repetitive thought pattern, this repetitive belief that you've held on to for a long time. The third thing you can do to distinguish rational from irrational thoughts in your relationship is to create and intentionally access a neutral state of mind. So what do I mean by that? A neutral state of mind is one where lots of perspectives are available to you. Like you can see the situation through your eyes, through your partner's eyes, through the eyes of a neutral observer looking at the two of you, it feels like instead of having this narrow focus where all you can see is like, I'm not good enough and he's not the one and we're not meant to be together, it broadens and you can see like the bird's eye view, like you're in a plane looking down at your life and your relationship. And you get this wide perspective from a neutral place. So how do you get there? How do you get this broad perspective, this neutral perspective? How do you get out of your own narrow, blinders on, focused, irrational perspective? The best way to do it is to create a neutral place about something else in your life. Like maybe you've had some conflict at work, but you don't have so much emotional investment in it, right? It doesn't keep you up at night. You don't stress about it. Can you feel neutral about that argument at work? Can you feel neutral about your boss? Can you access a state where you're like, oh, there's a lot of ways of looking at this situation. I can see they have a valid point. Wow, and I can see that Rachel also has a valid point. And if I'm a neutral observer looking at both of them, I can understand their perspectives, where they're coming from and what they want. Maybe you can access that frame of mind about something at work or about something with a friend or with a parent. Pick an area of your life where there's a little bit of conflict and choose to access a neutral frame of mind. Get that big, broad, open perspective where you can see it all. And when you're there, notice how it feels. Notice what kind of language you use when you're talking to yourself from that frame of mind. What does it feel like to be in that neutral place? What does it feel like in your body? What does it look like in your mind's eye? What does it sound like when you're talking to yourself? Intentionally 
notice, observe, and hold on to that feeling of neutrality, that neutral perspective. And then as you go throughout your day, you can practice that neutral state. You can intentionally bring it up throughout your day, here and there, and then it will become something that you can access on purpose. You can access when you want it. And then when you get into that state of relationship anxiety, where your thoughts are spiraling out of control and you can't tell if they're rational or not, when you're there, you've practiced this neutral state. So intentionally bring it into bear on your relationship. And if you've practiced it enough ahead of time, you'll find that you can actually get there when you need it. But do not wait and try to get to a neutral state of mind when you're in the midst of those intrusive, irrational thoughts. It's not gonna work if you wait until then. This is something you have to set up ahead of time. You have to intentionally create a neutral space. So practice it when your relationship anxiety is under control, when it's not driving you crazy. So guys, what we've been talking about, and I wanna just do a little recap for people coming in later, it is so natural to have irrational thoughts about your relationship. Be just because you're having them doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. However, those irrational thoughts, if you don't deal with them, can do a lot of damage to your relationship. They can even lead to a breakup, to a divorce, to you driving your partner out of your life or sabotaging your relationship. So it's not your fault those irrational thoughts are there, but it is your responsibility to do something about them once you become aware of them. So there are three ways that you can start to notice if a thought you're having about your relationship is rational or irrational. The first is to get brave and get curious and explore your own insecurities. Remember, most of the time, if you're having an irrational thought about your relationship, it's stemming from something you're insecure about yourself. Second is to really take a close look at your specific fears. What are you anxious is going to happen in your relationship? What are those irrational thoughts or rational thoughts telling you? Are they reflecting old fears that you've had throughout your life or is it something new? This can help you tell if this is an old ingrained irrational thought pattern or something new going on that you need to investigate and explore. And finally, practice accessing a neutral place, a neutral state of mind where you can take a bird's eye view and look at the situation from all angles. If you can do that in your relationship, you will be able to see what is actually going on and separate the rational from the irrational and make educated, responsible choices that will help you be happier and more successful in your relationship. Guys, I hope this was helpful. Again, for those of you joining us later, I'm Rachel Sloan, and I help anxious people save their marriages, save their relationships by overcoming these intrusive thoughts. You can do it in as little as 30 days, if you know how, and I can teach you how. So if you would like to learn more, please click the link below in the comments and book your free strategy call with me today. I'd love to talk to you and find out if your intrusive thoughts about your relationship are something I can help you with. Also guys, for those of you on YouTube, please click the subscribe button and click that little bell to turn on notifications so you don't miss any videos. I'm gonna be giving a lot of tips about how to deal with intrusive, irrational thoughts in relationships and how to overcome relationship anxiety so you can really thrive and have the kind of marriage you've always dreamed about. All right, guys, leave me a note in the comments. I look forward to talking to you tomorrow.